today we are going to look at probably the one of the most controversial works by Frank Miller. We are not going to talk about the story. We are not going to talk about the politics. I'm not interested in it. I'm just interested in the artwork. I love Frank Miller. I love Frank Miller's artwork. I would look at Frank Miller uh, paint or draw on a piece of toilet paper with a shit. I mean, that's how much I love Frank Miller, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Frank Miller is one of my favorite artists of all time. I adore Frank Miller's work. And when I see something like this and it's controversial, I go, I'm just not even going to look at the story. I'm not even going to look at it, whether I agree with it or not, whether I believe it or not, whatever it may be, I, I don't care. What I want to look at is the work. And Holy Terror, from what I've seen, when I've looked inside, it is your typical Frank Miller book, art-wise. It looks like something that could have been taken out of Sin City. It looks like Dark Knight Returns. It looks like anything that he's done in the past. And Frank is one of those guys where I know a lot of people like to badmouth him and say, oh, he's gone crazy or this or that, whatever it may be. Um, this, this, this will tell you what the story is about. But look at this. Look at this artwork here. It's a rather large book, and, a, and I love, by the way, I love the way that this book was printed in this very, like, widescreen way. You know, it's not your typical comic book. And, you know, Frank was always a guy who pushed as far as he possibly could and did different things that people... He always wanted to add to the comic book medium. He always wanted to improve it in some way. Whether you like the story or not, or what the story says, or whatever it may be, in my opinion, is irrelevant from an artistic standpoint. And I know a lot of people say, Frank's lost his way. He, he doesn't draw the same. I actually like Frank Miller's artwork now a lot more than I thought I, than I, thought I did. When I really look at it, I think he's still a great artist. So, I mean... He's always a guy who was very creative and was not doing the norm. And he definitely were his inspirations on the page. You know, there's some stuff in here that looks like Mobius work. There's some stuff that looks like um, uh, Goseki Kojima. I mean, all kinds of different people. Neil Adams, there's some Neil stuff that looks like Neil Adams stuff. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Come on now. Now, a lot of people pan this book because of what it's about. That's fine. But I mean, come on. That's Frank. That's Frank Miller. Sorry if you're going to hear that scratching noise. I'm going to try to, to not scratch the back of the little thing I have it on as much as possible. But I probably will. So this is a very difficult book to make. I could have probably done it on a flat surface. I probably should have. But I'll try to do my best. I mean, look how cool that is. Every piece is just so awesome looking. To me, it looks awesome. And he's going crazy on the page. I mean, look at the amount of splatter he's using. He's just going on the page and going, I have an idea and I'm going to get it on the page and then I'm going to fuck with it until it looks super rad. And my goodness, does it look rad. I mean, look at the... He was using that white... I think he got a little too overconfident with that white from working on Sin City for so many years. Now, I think this came out 2011, I believe, which is pretty interesting because it feels like it came out a million years ago. I may be wrong on the date, and I apologize if I am, but I'm pretty sure it came out in 2011. And even simple things like that, like her, like the, those lines telling you that her hands are scratching on the walls. Ugh, I just, I don't know how somebody could, I mean, again, if I'm a reader, I probably wouldn't like this book. But if I'm an art fan, come on now. Come on. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I when I look at Frank Miller's work, it is... I, I, I don't even know how... Like I, When I looked at Dark Knight Returns for the first time, it was like... My world had been black and white before, and now it was in color. 
I looked at this guy and I was just like, holy shit, this guy might be the greatest artist of all time. He's my Jack Kirby. I love Jack Kirby. I love Jack Kirby. But man, Frank? Frank to me, I'm going to go through these pages as, as I talk. Frank to me is, is, is my generation's Jack Kirby. I'm 32 years old. So, I mean, I'm a little bit late. I mean, obviously, you know, he would have probably inspired guys like, you know, Todd McFarlane and uh, Rob Liefeld and guys like that. But I, I don't know. I feel like he is my Jack Kirby. I feel like, I don't know. It's just, I love his artwork. I mean, look at things like that. Like, look at her deltoid there. And then you get that, like, little line there that shows you the separation of the tricep and the bicep. I mean, little things like that. He figured out simplistic ways to do things. I mean, look at those hands. There's not much going on in the hands, but look at the the, the beauty of just the ink work there. I love Frank Miller's artwork. And when you get to see it at this huge, like, this is ginormous. I mean, this is, this is widescreen. I mean, this is as big as it can get. You know, at least in my opinion, like this, this great format of this long format and you just get to see this beautiful artwork very cinematic i feel like this was also a time where people valued comic books i mean for a company to put out a comic book that is in this format i mean i love this gesture here of like i, I just um, it's just so awesome of her body coming forward and her legs back and that overlapping beauty frank knows overlapping he knows every he knows a lot of things i would say he knows everything but i mean just man and if people go oh frank miller's work only looks good when klaus jansen was thinking it really because i will fucking disagree with you on that forever look at oh my goodness every page i'm just taking it back like whoa man i don't know maybe i'm a crazy person maybe i should be put in a psych ward but come on you're gonna tell me you, you're looking at that and you don't think that that's beautiful artwork i'm probably the only person who was gushing about this book the story i don't give a shit about the story i don't care I don't care i know that some people will find it offensive and they're offended by it and i apologize if you're offended by it but just don't read the story look at the art even though i think frank is a master storyteller by the way it doesn't get enough credit in any i mean everybody the cool thing now is like shitting on frank miller people got tired of shitting on rob life so like we're gonna shit on frank miller okay i mean that's what you want to do go for it beautiful fucking lettering by the way by the way, no Lynn Varley to see, I would assume. So, no, no Lynn Varley around at this time. I mean, look at that. Oh, I mean, look at that. I mean, wow. Wow. But look at that right there. Beautiful. I just love the way he draws muscles. They're very, like forms there's a lot of form going on a lot of overlap there's not much like there's anatomy there for sure 100 percent. he understands anatomy like you can see the scapula connecting to the deltoid connecting to the bicep and the tri. you can see that but he's using a lot of just regular forms to kind of get there you know beautiful beautiful stuff man Look at these structures. I'm a, I, I go crazy for cool structures and books and cool, like, uh, you know, uh, landscapes, stuff like that. I mean, it's just so cool. I mean, he's just using simple, simple. I don't even know if there is, is there perspective on this page? This looks like, he, I don't know what he's doing here. What a bizarro decision right there. Is that like a city? I don't even know. Where, and look at the, look at the. The brush, the brush, and he's just going. I mean, it's just. I don't. Is he using his finger? He might be using his thumb. He might just be going like this. I don't know. I kind of kind of looks like thumbprints at points. Frank definitely wanted to tell this story, and had a lot of passion with it. And the artwork. Oh my God! Look at that beautiful, beautiful artwork, man. I think this is a book that people are going to look back in, in many, many years. 
from now, many, many years from now, people are going to look back at this work and go, man, I don't know. I think this artwork is great. I mean, there are, I mean, these pieces, if they were in a museum, people would go fucking crazy over this stuff. I mean, I love his use of silhouettes and blacks. I mean, it's just like, oh, it's just, it, 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 I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm the biggest Frank Miller fan in the world. I don't think that's possible though. And I love that. A unicorn. You know, originally this was supposed to be a Batman story. And of course, DC did not want to put it out because it was a controversial topic. That's fine and all. And beautiful face there. And I love how he uses like these these like these different colors, like pink, red. I think he uses other different colors as well. So this is originally a Batman story. DC didn't want to put it out, so I, I think it was done by Legendary, which I th could have sworn was owned by Warner Brothers, but I could be wrong. Or was owned by Warner Brothers at the time. <laughs> Not sure. But, man. Oh, come on. Are you going to tell me that this stuff isn't beautiful? Beautiful artwork. It's always gestural. Very heavy in forms, and it's very gestural. He's thinking about the story before he's thinking about anything else. But the art is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I love these faces and, and how every person looks different. And it's so Frank Miller, you know? It's like when you, it's like, people always say like, isn't it so cool like when you can hear like a note on a song and you instantly know who the guitar player is. Like you can listen to a Led Zeppelin song, two seconds of a Led Zeppelin song and you're like, oh, I know that's Jimmy Page, so that's Led Zeppelin. It's the same thing with Frank Miller. You can look at a Frank Miller piece and go, without a shadow of a doubt, that's Frank Miller. You can even look at his early stuff, which we will look at at some point because I have his early Spider-Man stuff. When he was trying to kind of draw like the house style, you're like, no, that's Frank Miller. Because Frank Miller was so unique and found his voice very early on and just kept at it and kept at it and kept at it. And then it became beautiful style, kind of like Jack Kirby. Like everybody knows, everybody can tell a Kirby piece. Everybody can tell a Frank Miller piece. And he's doing some and I already said this before, but he's doing some unique shit. I mean, even the way that he's doing like the foreshortening of the legs coming forward. I mean, he's doing some really cool compositional stuff and really creative and experimental inking. This is, I don't know, man. I, I, I just gush over this artwork. I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but I mean, this, I mean, take a look at this stuff. I mean, there's so much story just a single piece. Again, I think people are going to look back at this and they're going to be like, maybe we're a little too harsh on this. You know, there's a lot of like, <clears throat> like I'm a big music fan. There's a lot of albums that people didn't like back in the day. And then like 20, 30 years later, people go, man, that album was really great. I think this, the same thing is going to happen with this book. I think people are going to appreciate this. And I mean, it's basically like we got our own little Dark Knight Returns story without Dark Knight Returns. But again, I'm not here for the story. I'm here for the artwork. My goodness. I love the way he draws. I love the way he draws just like muscles and arms and legs. And I mean, I love that that chest is coming out and you can see that clear form of that rib cage there. Beautiful stuff. And that center line is perfectly set there. It's just so natural. And that's what I love of Frank Miller. And of course, the silhouettes and fun things like that. I mean, it looks like they're like falling. So you have that three point perspective. So it kind of shows you that obviously within their gesture, but that three point perspective of that, I'm assuming very sim simple building. I mean, there's not, it's just lines and really it's just, he's using white there with, with some black, obviously, but you don't, he doesn't need to tell you a lot. You know what you're, he, he figured out a way simplify everything but make it look so advanced and that's the thing i love about frank man love those blood splatters 
and like those razors there. Now there are some there are some points in here. Like oh, by the way, look at that. I mean, he's giving you structures just with using brush. I mean, look at that. Anyways, there are some pages in here that are just like yeah, like this. Like I don't know what the point of this is. Maybe it's like an intermission between the story. I don't know. But and then we start getting some greens in there. Well, obviously we have the greens for her eye, but. Man, I, that might have been just, no, there's, there's pen work there for sure, but that kind of looks like it was just, he just brushed that in. And I'm not really into this like Jackson Pollock shit. Like I'm not into it, but like Miller knows how, to, Miller's doing it to a point where he's like, I can draw. I know how to draw. I know how to paint, whatever, draw. I know how to ink. But I'm also gonna do some cool stuff with like Jackson Pollock kind of stuff where it's like some crazy lines and crazy blots on the page, but also give you these beautiful structures. And then we get something here that's a little more traditional and less chaotic here on this page. It's like when you get to these chaotic pieces, like where crazy shit's going on, it's very chaotic. And then you get a kind of piece there, but then you get some white on here that's going, okay, maybe we're going into a very chaotic point. Like maybe we're going into a story point that's a little more chaotic. So we're gonna bring that brush back in and we're gonna start to put some more spots on the page. God, look at that. That that if that was if that was in a museum, people would, would stop and look at that. There's no way they would. There's no way they wouldn't. So here's our Commissioner Gordon. Or whatever his name is in this book. And I mean, I love how he's just like, he's using black. Like, he's using a silhouette to kind of go, here's a person behind Gordon or whoever this character is. I mean, and I mean, look at that perfectly square head with that square jaw. Beautiful, beautiful work. And those hands, those are Kirby hands right there. Man, look at that. My goodness. And then we go back to this chaotic situation between Batman and Catwoman. Or what's his name? The Fixer and whatever her name is. I don't even remember the names of the characters. Goodness. My goodness. That's like Dark Knight Returns right there. Legitimately. I also love how he kind of learned from his mistake with that second Dark Knight book he did. Where it looked like shit. And he's like, eh, I'm not going to really ever do that crap again. I mean, look at these, like, lines that kind of show you, like... You know how, like, when you... Uh, what's, like, that... What's... That shit in between, like, walls, you know? Like, the pipe... Not piping, but, like... I don't know, like, that solid structure... But they're all chaotic and crazy. They're not like perfectly aligned, you know? He's kind of doing like this absurd caricature of everything. And that's Miller's work, man. I mean, it's just caricatures of everything. Beautiful, but it also is so serious. It's not like, you know, this is not, you know, this is not fun joking around shit. This is, I mean, look at that helicopter there. It reads as a helicopter, I'm assuming. Definitely looks like a helicopter to me, but also looks like a plane a bit too. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like a structure that can fly, right? And just these solid, it's just like he's, I mean, he's, yeah, it's a helicopter being blown up. And it's just like solid black. I mean, you, you know that what that is. You don't need to sit there and get every line and every, you know, texture that needs to be on there and every it's just like i'm gonna take these very simple shapes i mean it's like drawing 101 he's taking very simple shapes and he's representing he's going to show you did this is a helicopter and you go i look at it long enough yep that's a helicopter it reads and that's a master to me if you have the ability to take simple shapes 
and somebody can read what it is, you're a master of drawing. You're a master artist. Look at the movement of that cape, man. You know, everybody talks about McFarlane's ability to move the cape. Miller's ability to move the cape is beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful stuff. I mean, and you get these like rips in his, in his, you know, his shirt or whatever, his costume. And, and then you get these beautiful, beautiful, like, um, like wrinkles in the cape. It's just, oh, man. Oh, man. Again, simple. He, he, it's like simple stuff. You know, you don't have to sit there and draw every every fucking tile or ever or, or whatever every brick or every piece of structure there you go that's a water tower and that's a building it's on top of a building and there's like something in front of it that's all you need you can learn a lot from miller by just looking at his work and really studying it and Sometimes being very simplistic is, I mean, look at that car. That's not an overly detailed car. That's not an amazing car. It's just a car and it reads as a car. That's all you need. And then he's sort of putting like some extra textures and some extra lines in there. So, I mean, it's, and I love the shadow in the back and the overlap. She's overlapping his shadow, but then her shadow, it's just, ah. Beautiful stuff. Look at that. It's like a movie. It's like watching a movie. I really do wish people made comics like this still. Like that were just so cinematic. I feel like we've lost our way a lot of the time. Oops, I didn't know that was in the way. But that goes away. There we go. Sorry. Sorry that got in the way if it gets in the way again i do apologize but man i love that i'm not really into this stuff that much it's whatever i mean it's you know caricatures of people in power at the time Beautiful work. I mean, I love... Uh, that is the one thing about this book, is the simplification of everything. And I love, like, these panels for people talking, like the talking heads. Very, like, Dark Knight Returns-esque. And then you get something like this. Like a snail. Very... I mean, just an interesting thing that he adds. I don't know if it has some meaning or what. Look at that. Beautiful building. It's just so simple. I love it. And then that, again, silhouettes, somebody walking through, coming through. I mean, it's so cinematic. It's so like a noir, you know, somebody coming through. And then you get this cool, like, um, inking work that's getting the silhouette. And then, boom, we get to there. And then we get some pink in here. Use of colors. I mean, so cool, such cool stuff. And I love the structure there of that building. I think that sometimes that's that's how I draw buildings because I'm just like, I don't want to add every stone and every piece of texture. I just want to convey like, this is, a, this is a building, here you go. Man. I do apologize for that scratching noise. And then we get into full pink here. It's so cool. So different. And I mean, it, again, it's this, this guy who's just experimenting on the page. He doesn't care whether this sells a million copies or one copy. Frank Miller doesn't care about that. Frank Miller cares about doing a story that is creative and experimental and different than everything that's on the stands at this time at the time and now yeah, look at those kirby legs by the way that is a fucking jack kirby drawing if i ever saw one he was looking at kirby that day but he just wants to do stuff that's different than what's on the panel 
and he's doing it or on the panel i mean that's that's on the that's that's available for people to buy that's on the you know the shelves when you go into the comic book shop and he's doing it you know how many times do i need to see neil adams drawing fucking batman before i go okay i get it neil adams you draw batman very well do something different you know you can draw batman but be a little more creative and, and miller was always trying to get better again another very very kirby-esque drawing there for sure he was feeling kirby that day man it's like something out of fucking akira man <laughs> so cool how he just uses that red beautiful 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 stuff i love those faces man Then we have the man, the myth, the legend there, Frank Miller. And then we have a beautiful page in the back. What a amazing, amazing looking comic. Whatever, whether you agree with it, disagree with it, whatever the story is, doesn't matter. Some people will say it's the only thing that matters. My thing is I am here for the art and I'm sorry. I don't know how you can look at this book and not think this book is beautiful. Like I said, I think this book will age very well in the future. So you can come back on this video and like when I'm long gone dead, if, if YouTube still exists and you can be like, man, you remember that guy who did that video on Holy Terror 50 years ago? He was right. That shit aged pretty well, actually. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people go, it's, it's right now, in the times that we're going through right now, I don't want to get political. This book is probably not something you want to be walking around with, but it's a beautiful book. And it's art, whether you disagree with it or not. There's artists who have done work. And I'm not saying I agree with this, by the way. Um, but there are artists who have done work that I don't agree with the message, but man, I can't sit there and not say that if it looks great, it looks great. And this book looks great. And that's the thing we have to remember. This is comics. This is an expression. I mean, if Frank agrees with this still, I'm not sure if Frank doesn't agree with this still, I'm not sure, but you can't tell me that this book doesn't look great. And you cannot tell me that this was not in one of the coolest formats in the world. I mean, it's just so cool how like cinematic it feels. Like this is the closest you're getting to like a movie in comic books. Why more comics aren't printed this way, I have no idea. Why comics are not respected more in this way, I have no idea. But I mean for, what were they charging 30 bucks for this? I didn't buy it for 30 bucks, but let's pay, say you pay 25 bucks for this, even if you pay 30 bucks for it, it's totally fucking worth it, in my opinion. Totally worth it. And uh, this is a book that I don't think is very difficult to get your hands on. It, you gotta wait. You gotta play the waiting game on this one. But if you get it... I wanted to make sure I was recording. That would be really terrible if I just recorded a 25-minute video and I wasn't recording. But if you, if, you get, if, you, if you can wait on it and you can find it, whether you agree with the message or not, just look at the artwork. Just look at how beautifully beautifully drawn it is and there are people who badmouth this book and say it's garbage it's trash and they'll only pay attention to the story and they don't pay attention to the the art and these are usually people who don't know how to draw themselves or have no interest in drawing and people who say frank miller's lost his mind my honest opinion on that is you're wrong and people who badmouth his artwork are wrong and i know Frank Miller doesn't need me simping for him. Dude will be totally fine in life. And he doesn't need to prove anything. And he can probably die a very, very happy man knowing that he had major contributions in comics. And somebody like me who has a YouTube channel who talks about comic book art and draws himself, he doesn't need me, right? I'm an amateur. But I'm, I'm going to stick up for this book and say it's a beautifully drawn book. Whether you'd like to admit it or not, I adore this fucking 
book when it comes from the artistic standpoint, from the artistic style, because this is no different than Dark Knight Returns, no different than Sin City, in my opinion, in other than one aspect, and it's more experimental, and I actually think it makes the book look amazing. And I cannot not open up a page and not be blown away by what's inside. I mean, just, yeah. So anyways, this video is quite long. Mm -hmm.